Good evening, baseball fans, and welcome to Houston for Game 4 of the ALCS, where tonight the Toronto Blue Jays will be looking to complete a sweep of the Astros and make a second consecutive World Series. But the big news ahead of this one is we're joined by Jays GM Ozzy Villain is the continuing injury crisis at the Jays with catcher Reese McGuire, the latest to have his season ended early. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Unfortunately, Reese uh, has hurt his back, so he's uh, he's done for the year. Uh, but we'll soldier on with Denny Jansen behind the plate. He's more than capable of doing that. Uh, and of course, it does now leave a spot in the lineup. It doesn't let a hitter. Uh, for those that aren't in the lineup already uh, to fight over. So that's um, that's hopefully going to spike some good competition for us. Now, it's obviously important for us, too, that uh, Denny does stay fit now. Uh, Matt Jones has joined up with us from AAA, and whilst I'd love to say I have full faith in him to come in and do a job for us, um, the truth is I've only just learned who he is. Hi guys, I'm Ozzy Villain. Welcome to Season 3, Episode 12 of the Toronto Blue Jays. And today we have a chance to sweep the Astros and get back to the World Series. It's looking as though it's not going to be against the Braves for a second year, though. The Dodgers hold a 2-0 lead in that series. Uh, but we only have to worry about ourselves right now and making sure we get there. Now, as you've just heard, it hasn't all gone to plan. Reese McGuire is season over. That in itself is not a massive problem, because what we can do is Denny Jansen can come in and catch. Uh, he's, he's just as good behind the plate, and, well, he's a designated hitter anyway, so he's just as good um, just as good with the bat. So that in itself is not a problem, but if anything happens to Denny Jansen, then we do have a problem, because the backup is Matt Jones. He has been playing AAA all year, average at best. Um, the reason I've called him in is because he was the best defensive option, um, and to be honest, the difference between you know with the bat between all the catchers was was they, that's roughly our level. Unfortunately, we did of course lose at least one, if not two, catchers to the expansion draft. So we kind of had our catching stocks ripped apart, and it's come back to haunt us now at the wrong time. Um, now obviously there's game two and three to catch you up on. So let's uh, go and have a look and see how game two got on. We had of course Blake Snell on the mound. So the lineups for game two. Bo Bichette leads us off at shortstop. Oswald Peraza bats second at second. It's Vlad Jr. batting third at third. Matt Beatty bats fourth. He's in left field. Denny Jansen doesn't let a hitter bats five. Reese McGuire, the catcher, bats six. Rowdy Tellez bats seven. He's at first base. Randall Grishuk in right field bats eight. It's Billy Hamilton in center field batting nine. Blake Snell takes the mound for us. And we're up against Alex Wood for the Astros. None on, one out, and it's Billy Hamilton with the home run. That's oh, right, Billy, Billy Hamilton. Hamilton. One on, none out, and Matt Beatty rips a triple down the right field line, scoring Vlad from first. None on, one out, and Jose Altuve pulls one back for the Astros. One on, none out, and Rowdy Tellez hits it over center field for an RBI double. Two out, loaded bases for Vlad Jr., and he rips a double into right center field, scoring two. Next man up, two on, two out for Matt Beatty, and he delivers his own two RBI double. One on, two out, and Junior Fernandez finishes things in style. So there we go, it was a good win for us. The star with the bat was obviously, you can see there, Matt Beatty, three for four with three RBIs, Vlad Junior. Uh, didn't do too bad himself, did he? Um, so yeah, it was it was really, really good. Really, really good to see. Snell was quite good. 6.1 innings, only the one earned run. Uh, Junior Fernandez came in, closed it out for him. Um, and Billy Hamilton with the home run. I never thought I'd see the day, but uh, well done to Billy Hamilton. He's only hit of the postseason, and it cleared the fence. Love to see it. Uh, this was where um, where we did lose Maguire. Now, unfortunately, I didn't realize that Desnetta Hitter couldn't uh, then go and catch. So we ended up with um, with Brandon Jury behind the plate for a little bit. So uh, lesson learned there. I won't be having the catcher designated a hitter anymore. Uh, I will make sure there's a third. I've learned a lesson there. And luckily it didn't cost us. Um, all right, let's go see how game three got on with our youngster John Fleming on the mound. 
So the lineups for game three. Bo Bichette leads us off from shortstop. Batting second, playing second is William McQuaid. Batting third at third is Vlad Jr. Cleaning up at left field is Matt Beatty. Denny Anson, the catcher, bats five. Rowdy Tellez, the first baseman, bats six. Brandon Jury is a designated hitter. He comes in to bat seven. It's Randall Grishuk batting eight in right field. Billy Hamilton batting nine in center field. John Fleming takes the mound for us. They're up against veteran Charlie Morton for the Astros. None on, two out, and Vlad Jr. hits a home run over the left field fence. Three on, none out, and Jordan Alvarez hits a grand slam. One on, one out, and Matt Beatty's ground out scores William McQuaid. One on, two out, and it's Beatty scoring McQuaid again, this time with an RBI single. One on, two out, and Vlad Jr. hammers a home run over center field. Run on, two out, and Hendricks gets the ground out to Bichette at shortstop. So honestly, Fleming wasn't too bad. He had one bad innings, gave up the grand slam, but we were able to bail him out. And by we, of course, I mean Vlad Jr. Two home runs, three RBIs. Love to see it. Beatty with two more RBIs as well. Um, that three and four slot is really, really coming up big for us so far this series. Uh, Bo Bichette didn't have a great day at the top of the, uh, of the order there, but it was fine. We got the job done. Fleming, uh, as I said, just that one bad innings that, that made him look a lot worse than he was. Fernandez and Hendricks saw it out for us. Excellent stuff. You love to see it. And that brings us, of course, to game four. Let's go have a look at these lineups. And this is it. Bo Bichette leads us off at shortstop. William McQuaid at second, bats second. Vlad Jr. at third, bats third. Matt Beatty continues to clean up in left field. Denny Jansen, the catcher, bats five. Oswald Peraza is a designated hitter for this one. He gets the first chance to nail down that uh, position. He bats six. Rowdy Tellez uh, returned to form for him so far this series. He bats seven at first base. Grishak in a slump. He bats eight. Billy Hamilton in a slump is at uh, batting nine. Right field and center field, respectively. John Duplantier takes the mound for us. His demons of last season's World Series. Um, a chance to put some of those to rest here. Let's hope he gets the job done for us. Uh, we're up against today Tyler Anderson. Uh, for the uh, for the Astros, an ERA this regular season of just under five, a WHIP of 140, ERA plus of 97, and only a WAR of 0.04. He looks he looks beatable. The pitching matchup goes to Duplantier. Let's see if we can sweep him. And here we go. Welcome to Houston, Texas. It's going to be uh, Bichette to lead us off, and let's see what Bo can do. A chance, of course, to sweep them, get ourselves into the into the World Series. It would be a wonderful thing if we could do it, just because our bullpen would be fully rested. We'd have uh, Pearson and Snell raring to go for game one and two. Oh, and Vlad, not Vlad, it was a Vladish hit, wasn't it? But Bo Bichette rips it down into right left field. Good start by the commentator here. <laughs> Got both the direction of the hit and the hitter wrong. But Bo Bichette leads us off with a double. It's William McQuaid coming in, batting 250 this postseason. And McQuaid can't quite get it through the infield, but it does get Bo over to third. And with one out, it's Vlad Jr. with a chance to drive in a run. He's batting 450 so far this postseason. The first pitch swing. Come on, Vlad. Come on, Vlad. He has got it into the outfield, and that'll do it. Bo Bichette comes in to score. Vlad's going to stand up at second, or he might slide just for show. He does slide. It's an RBI double for Vlad Jr. And, well, there we go. Excellent, excellent stuff. One out, one run across the plate. Vlad at second, and it's Matt Beatty's turn now, batting 4-17 this postseason. Another first pitch swing. Beatty. That's going to be caught there at second base. For a second, I thought it maybe was going to drop in, but no such luck. That's two away for Denny Jansen. Only batting once. You can see the bottom of our order isn't really doing too much. It's sort of the top four that are getting the job done for us, with just a little bit of help from the rest. It is a strikeout there for Denny Jansen. We do have a one-run lead, so that's important. And Duplantier comes in to face Tucker, who is batting 424 so far this postseason. Three and one is the count on the leadoff man. And Duplantier, it's a swinging bunt. Jansen's there. He makes the play, and that is one away. 
Excellent stuff. Altuve batting 286 this postseason. 1-0 and is the count. Altuve lays down a bunt. It's fielded by Tellez. William McQuaid takes first base, and that's two away. And so far, so good. Alvarez batting 265. He hit a grand slam, of course, in game three. It's a full count. Two out. Come on, Duplantier. Oh, he strikes him out. Excellent stuff. We're through one, and we're winning 1-0. Peraza batting 125 comes in. Designated hitter, of course, up against the left-handed pitcher, which is why he came in ahead of uh, other options. And, well, that's popped up in the center field, and that's one away. Brings up Rowdy Tellez now. Only batting 200, but a big, big improvement in form in recent games. That is popped up, though, and that'll be two away. I think that's only three pitches thrown or four pitches thrown, which isn't ideal. Randall Grishuk comes in now in a slump. He has two hits. No, sorry, he has three hits and two of those have been home runs. But that's another strikeout for Grishuk and that'll do it for the second or the top of it. We're 1-0 up. Duplantier comes out to face Bregman who's batting 250 this postseason. Two and two's the count. And there's a strikeout to start off the innings. Go on. Duplantier, he knows he owes us from last season, doesn't he? Of course, he... We were one out away from winning the World Series, and then Duplantier came in. Uh, and, well, we all know what happened from there, don't we? And if you don't know what happened, you can probably guess. All right, it's Jerry Springer coming up, batting 167 so far this postseason. Two out, no one on. One and two's the count. Sitting down. Oh, it's hit. It's hit into left field. Beatty's there right in the corner. It stays in. And that'll do it for the second. We have the one-run lead still as we go to the top of the third. And Billy Hamilton to lead us off. His only hit was a home run. Eight and nine in this team. They only hit home runs. That's all they want to do. Billy Hamilton with a swinging bunt. Can he beat it out? No, he cannot. And that is one away. Bichette, who of course led us off with a cracking hit down into left field uh, first time around. This time he grounds at the shortstop. And that'll be two away. And it's going to be William McQuaid now, who is 0 for 1 today with a chance to try and do something. 1 and 2 is the count. 2 out, no one on. And McQuaid strikes out. And that will do it for the top of the third. Yasmani Grandel batting 0.71 this season. Or this postseason, sorry. That's the ground ball to Bichette into the shift. And that is one away. Brings up Diaz, who is batting 71 as well full count. That is a home run and it's 1-1. Duplantier left that one sitting up, didn't he? And it was absolutely crushed. 362 feet. So it wasn't crushed as badly as it maybe looked, but it certainly was a well-hit ball. It's 1-1 and Duplantier gives up the home run. Arcia comes in the bat now, batting 115. A first pitch swing and that is into center field and it's going to drop in for a one-out single. Come on, Johnny boy, don't let that get to you. You've done okay so far. Kyle Tucker comes in 0 for 1 today. Another first pitch swing. Tucker pops it up. Vlad Jr. should have a simple catch there at third. He does. Runner will go back to first. That's two away. And can do plenty eight get Altuve, who's 0 for 1 today, and end this innings. That should be a simple play over the second. And between Bo and William, we get that done. But we're tied at 1 after 3. Vlad Jr. to lead us off. He, of course, got that RBI double last time up. It's a first pitch swing. Come on, Vlad. Oh, Vlad Jr. It's 2-1. to one. Vlad Jr. doing what he does. A third home run in two games. 422 feet over the right left field fence. I've got to learn my lefts and rights today. It's 2-1 to the Blue Jays. And Vladimir Jr., take a bow, mate. Wonderful stuff. Matt Beatty comes up now. One and two and one's the count, sorry. And he hits it into left field, and that is going to drop in, and it's a single for Matt Beatty. All right, what can Denny Jansen do now? Batting 158 this postseason. He's popped that up. Beatty will have to go back to first. And that is one away. It brings up Peraza, who is 0 for 1 today. One and two's the count. Peraza pops it up in foul territory as well, and that'll be two out. And it's going to bring up Rowdy Tellez. And can he do something here for us? 0 for 1 today. 1 and 2 is the count. Come on, Rowdy. No, he watches strike 3. But we go back in front. Thanks to Vlad Jr.'s solo blast. It's 2-1 to the Jays. Do plenty A to face Alvarez. He is 0 for 1. 2 and 1 is the count. And it's 2-2. 
crushed over the right field fence this time. Alvarez with his second home run in as many days. 403 fe uh, feet. That's where the Grand Slam went as well, I think, if I remember correctly. And Duplantier, he's doing what he does, isn't he? It's Bregman, 0 for 1 today. What can Duplantier do with him? A full count. No one out, no one on. And that is well hit, but straight to Beatty. And that is one away. Carpenter comes in now. He's 0 for 1 today. 1 and 2 is the count. And Duplantier sits him down. Excellent stuff. Two away now for Jerry Springer, who's 0 for 1. Come on, Johnny Boy. That's ripped there straight to, uh, to Vlad Jr. Makes the play. One apiece in the fourth innings. We're tied at 2. And it's Randall Grishuk to lead us off. 0 for 1 today. 3 and 1's the count. Grishuk gets himself on base. We'll take it. We will take it. It brings up Billy Hamilton now. He's 0 for 1 today. Billy Hamilton lines it straight to second base. And that is the first out of the top of the fifth. Bo Bichette now 1 for 2. Come on, Bo. A first pitch swing. Bo Bichette. He has popped it up. That's going to be 2 away now with William McQuaid, who hasn't looked particularly good at the plate so far today. Facing a left-handed pitcher, not his strength. But, of course, injuries means that... Oh, I tell you what, it's not necessarily a weakness. Will McQuaid sends it over right field, and that's a two-run home run. Go on, son. 405 feet. It's 4-2 to the Blue Jays, and William McQuaid, he's just saving up all his strength for the third time around. Absolutely crushed over right field. It's his second home run of the postseason. That's the end of the picture. It brings up Streckrinder right up. His ERA is 9. He's going to face Vlad Jr., who's 2-for-2 two two and on a tear in this ALCS. And what can he do? He has popped it up, and that'll do it for the fifth. But thanks to Will McQuaid, we are 2-0 up. No, we're not. We're 4-2 up. We're two runs up, though. And it's going to be Duplantier to face Grandel, who's 0 for 1 today. And can Duplantier get himself out of an innings here without giving up a run? It would be a wonderful thing if he could. Diaz, who of course crushed that home run over left field last time up. 1 and 2 is the count. Duplantier has his revenge with a strikeout. That's 2 away. It brings up Arcia, who is 1 for 1. 2 and 1 is the count. And it is a ground ball to McQuaid over to first mate. And that'll do it for the fifth. We leap out to a two-run lead, our biggest lead of the game so far, and it's going to be Streckenrider to face Matt Beatty, who's one for two. Two and O's the count, and Beatty, has he hit it well enough? No, it went off the bat like a rocket, but just didn't quite have the distance. Denny Jansen, who's 0 for two today. What can he do? Owen oh, one's the count. Denny Jansen, well hit, but straight to second base, and that's two away. And that'll bring up Peraza, who's 0 for 2 in a slump as well. And Peraza gets a decent piece of it, but ultimately it's popped up, caught near the warning track. And that'll do it for the top of the sixth. No runs for the Jays in that one. And Duplantier comes out to face Tucker, who's 0 for 2 with a two-run lead. And make that a one-run lead as Kyle Tucker unleashes a massive home run over right field. Duplantier gives up his third home run of the game. It's 404 feet. It's 4-3 now. And Duplantier will continue to Altuve, who is 0 for 2 today. 2 and 2 is the count. That is hit into left field. BT can't get there on the full. Fields it on the bounce. And that is a single. And tying run aboard for Alvarez, who crushed a home run last time up. First pitch, swing, Duplantier, that could be a double play. Can Will turn it? There's one. Bo, can he turn it? He can! Massive, massive play. Good pitching by Duplantier to induce it as well. And Bregman now, who is 0 for 2 today, and he walks. Duplantier just really wants that tying run on base, doesn't he? Anderson Espinosa comes in now. That'll do plenty of, It wasn't bad. It wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. Carpenter comes in to face Espinosa. He is 0 for 2 today. Espinosa, 0 and 2 is the count. He ends that innings quick smart. And that will do it for the sixth. It's 4 3 to the Jays. Steckenrider, which is a great name, isn't it? To, to get uh, things underway to Rowdy Tellez. 2 and 1 is the count. What can Rowdy do? He has popped it up. And centre field will make a simple catch out there. And that is one away. Grishuk comes in the bat now. 0 for 1. He walked, of course, last time up. 
This time up, he gets a piece of it and he gets it past the shortstop into centre field. And it's a one-out single for Randall Grishuk. That'll do it uh, for Streckenrider. Conine comes out to pitch. He's going to face Hamilton. And Hamilton strikes out, as you would expect him to do. So with two out, Grishuk at first. It is Bo Bichette, who's one for three today. Three of those the count. Can Bo get himself on base? He can. And that's going to bring up William McQuaid, who last time up, of course, crushed a home run. Let's see what he can do this time. Oh, and two's the count. Has he done all his work for the game? Yes, he has. And that'll end that we stretch with a one-run lead. We strand two. And Anderson Espinosa to face Jerry Springer, who is 0 for 2. 0 and 2 is the count. And Espinosa continues as they get a cat hair up my nose to look an absolute star on the mound. Grandel, who's 0 for 2 now. 2 and 2 is the count. Espinosa, another strikeout. Anderson Espinosa. Oh, it's like cheating sometimes with him on the mound. Diaz now, who is 1 for 2 with that home run, of course. A full count, 2 out, no one on. And he walks him. Tying run aboard. Arcia now, who's one for two. What can Espinosa do with him? Two and two's the count. That is hit into right field. Grishuk's there. Grishuk makes the play. And that ends the seventh. Vlad Jr. to lead us off in the top of the eighth. He's two for three today with one home run, of course, as well. One and two's the count. Vlad Jr. watches strike three go past. Matt Beatty, who is one for three. What can he do with one out and no one on? He can walk. Denny Jansen now, who's 0 for 3 and not look particularly good at the plate today. Denny Jansen pops it up. That'll be two away. Still with Beatty at first. It's going to be up to Peraza to try and keep this innings going. But at 0 for 3, I don't think we're expecting too much here. 0 and 1's the count. Come on, Peraza. He's, again, hit it relatively well, but ultimately popped up and center field makes the catch. You need about another 30 feet on that, mate. Maybe more. And we come back out. Espinosa to face Tucker, who crushed a home run last time up. Full count on the leadoff man. And Espinosa walks in, puts the tying run on base with none out. Junior Fernandez comes in the pitch now. Let's see what Junior can do to Altuve, who is one for three today. He's hit him. No, he hasn't. What's happened there? It was a weird, like, butt bump or something. Anyway, one out. Runner goes to second, though. It's Alvarez with one massive home run already today. Two and two's the count. And that's a massive strikeout for two away. Runner still at second. And Bregman, who's 0 for 2. If Fernandez can get him out, we are three outs away from the World Series. Oh, no. We're a whole game away now because it is 5 to 3. The fourth home run we've given up. It's 5-4 to the Astros. And suddenly, it looks like we might need a game five. Junior Fernandez, who has been so good this postseason, has just let that slip. Carpenter comes in. One and two's the count. Two out, no one on. That'll do it. But the damage was done. It's 5-4 to the Astros. And we have arguably our weakest three hitters, with the, maybe the exception of Peraza. <laughs> Definitely the wrong part of our order up as Denny Jimenez comes in to try and close this out for the Astros. Rowdy Tellez, 0 for 3 today, I believe he is. 2 and 2's the count. Can Rowdy do anything with this? Oh, he can! Rowdy Tellez! Lead-off single that cat hair needs to go away. And Tellez stands at first. It is now Grishuk who is 1 for 2 today. 0 oh, and 2's the count. Grishuk takes a seat. Are we going to pinch hit Hamilton? We do. Khalil Lee comes in to pinch hit. His first at bat for the postseason. One and two's the count. Khalil Lee has ended it. Run, Khalil. He does get there. All right. We are down to our final out. Bo Bichette at the plate. Khalil Lee, who is absolutely rapid, represents the tying run at first. What can Bo do? Khalil Lee looks for the steal. Is he going to get there? He does. Oh, that was tight. All right, Bichette. Now, can he drive in this run? One and two's the count. Bichette pops it up. Get out. No, it's just short. And we are going to need a game five. So you could maybe argue we were a little bit unlucky there. Uh, we did out-hit them, but ultimately... 
ultimately we lost. You can't give up four home runs and expect to win games, can you? Certainly in the postseason. Uh, so there we go. We go again for a game five tomorrow. Now, my plan was to start Helsley in this one if there was a game five. He doesn't have the best stamina, but he, he can be a starter. There's no doubt about that. He's a really good starter, and what he does have is a really good ERA on the road. So I think we will start Helsley in, the, in this one. Uh, hopefully, my plan is that then we win that, and we don't have to Pearson and Snell are ready to go then for the World Series. Um, so that's the plan. Let me know what you think of that in the comments. Uh, and yeah, we go again for game five, and hopefully, well, it looks like the Dodgers are going to wrap their series up pretty quickly as well, so we want to make sure that uh, they're not having more rest than we do. That's it for today. If you have enjoyed that, please do hit thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you Wednesday for game five. Take care.